All right, everybody, welcome back to another Devs Play. Uh, today, we are going over X and Star Fox. Um, and with me going over X, or at least as much of it as he can remember, mm. is Dylan. Yes. Um, so cool. Do you mind telling me a little bit about this game? I don't know very much about it, aside from this is super impressive for a Game Boy game. Yeah, it's, um, it's a game I made in, uh, well, I started making it in about 1990, um, so 26 years ago. And uh, it uses uh, 3D vector graphics on the Game Boy, and it's about the game is kind of based on sort of the old 3D games I used to play on the Sinclair Spectrum, because uh -huh. um, there were a few back then. Yeah. And I kind of pulled together like a bunch of ideas and then just kind of assembled them rather haphazardly together to make uh, this game. So you're basically it's, it's a basically a 10 mission game. But each mission is very uniquely designed. Right. Um, and you are a space tank type thing, um, and you go through the missions uh, and basically just shoot everything and or solve um, or search for things and do that kind of thing. It's like a sort of mission-based type thing. Right. So the guy here is talking about the missions. It's all unfortunately there's only a Japanese version. We did make an English version, um, but Nintendo America decided it was too complex for the uh, American <laughs> market. Okay. Um, because obviously the Game Boy at that point was more just like a toy. In America, like it made, mm. made, people just play Tetris on it, um, okay. and so they didn't feel they could uh, really reach an audience uh, with a more complicated game like this. Um, I think it probably would have been fine in Europe, where you know we were already used to these kind of uh, sort of three-dimensional games. Right. Um, so there you're flying around. You can actually fly uh, later on as well. <laughs> what happened there? I think I pressed one of the trigger buttons, which have a uh, special oh, like a, emulator function. Oh, okay. Yes, I mean, yeah. I'm playing on an actual Game Boy, so I don't know what happened. Uh, oh, of there course, right now. no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. so uh, it's, it's real. It's real, <laughs> folks. Yeah, so um, it seems like Nintendo wasn't too jazzed about exciting about releasing this in the Western. Um, yeah, I mean, it was announced okay. once in uh, actually in uh, Nintendo Power. Oh, really? Yeah, I actually had an article about it, but it, at that point it was called uh, Lunar Chase. Lunar Chase. Yeah, but then a few months later. Um, uh, Yamuchi, Yamuchi, you know, the president, mm -hmm. the ex-president of uh, Nintendo, yeah. sort of phoned the uh, director of this, which is Sakamoto, the guy who made Metroid, right, basically. Right, right. Um, he's, a, he's a director of this game. And they and said, right, you're calling the game X. And then the game got called X. Um, and uh, and it, for, for no apparent reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the There's no reference to it. In the, it's just a, uh -huh. it was a Yamuchi-named game. It's uh, not for extreme or anything, just no, purely no, X. No. Okay. So, so right now you're playing the tutorial, so it's just teaching like the, the basics of the game. Okay, yeah, um, I got the compass on the bottom and the radar. Yeah, yeah. I guess that low is my altitude. Uh, it's your speed, actually. So um, it's a gear system. So if you push up and down uh -huh. on the on the, the D-pad, I suppose that yeah, um, it changes your gear. So one, this is one of the design things from Nintendo. They couldn't get used to like acceleration and deceleration um, while controlling sort of a 3D vehicle. Um, so they wanted to make it easier for the player by uh, setting like like cruising speeds. Mm -hmm. So you, that's you just do up down, you know. And then if you hold up, if you hold down up, it'll go into turbo mode and give you a bit of boost there. Okay. But it's yeah. It's, so I found this design thing a little bit different to what I was used to, but mm -hmm. um, I went with the flow anyway. Um, yeah. And it, it seemed to work quite well. And how did you how did you get involved in Nintendo? Uh, I used to work at a company called Argonaut Software mm -hmm. in London. Uh, who used to make, uh, who were very famous for making 3D games. Right. And I, uh, and one day uh, the boss, Jess, and said, uh, okay, you have Z80, you know, the CPU from the Sinclair Spectrum, uh, you have CPU, uh, sorry, Z80 knowledge. Um, the Game Boy is roughly a Z80. Uh -huh. uh, make something 3D on it. And uh, yeah, you've got to time that. <laughs> so I hit this ramp and I go into the air. Uh, yeah, you will, yeah. <laughs> you can fly. <laughs> but if you go into the other side, it's actually a door and sends you into the tunnel. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah. So oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, so you can do either. Um, okay. And so, uh, and I made it, and then he went, Jez San went and showed it to uh, Nintendo. At, at, the, at the time, we didn't have E3 and GDC and any of that. It was like, all you had was um, uh, uh, CES. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he went and showed it at like the winter CES or the summer CES, I which one. And uh, Nintendo saw it and said, oh, you, how, how the hell, hell have you made 3D on the Game Boy? <laughs> and uh, basically they said, okay, fly, we're flying you out to Japan next week. 
Oh, really? Yeah, and so uh, suddenly my boss came back down, uh, back from America and said, oh, uh, okay, you're going to Japan next week with me. We're going to sell this game to Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> we actually released a sequel to this on uh, uh, DSiWare. Oh, yeah, on I love that one. Yeah. yeah, and you can play it on the 3 It's pretty good. It's called, in America, it's called Xscape. Xscape. Yeah, yeah, and it, you can get it in America. It's all English. And is, um, it the, is it the same kind of game? Uh, it's the same kind of game, but, but much, much more, more modernized. <laughs> yeah, much more, modern. much more stylish, even more stylish. I mean, this is kind of stylish for its time, but uh, pretty interesting uh, game. Yeah. Uh, we use the same basic ideas, has the same sort of tunnel system and all this kind of thing in there. Yeah, this, I mean, these vector graphics remind me a lot of, um, I think it was Red Alert on the Virtual Boy. Oh, later on, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. which is a couple years after this, yeah. but I mean, that was on the Virtual Boy several years later. So yeah, seeing yeah, yeah. this on the Game Boy yeah, in yeah. 92 is incredibly impressive. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you got into this space. You've got to go in between those two gates. Okay. Those two. This is another okay. Nintendo design thing. They wanted people to understand 3D more, so they put those gates there uh -huh. to stop there and turn around. And then you'll see that if you follow, if you go through those two gates, you can enter into that radar building. Okay, so I just have to go yeah. between the two of them and stop. Yeah, and go and go straight into there. Go straight into the radar building. Okay. So this is this is a part of the Nintendo design thing where I was from England. I was just saying, oh, everything can be as hard as it is. <laughs> but they said no, you've got to make it a bit easier. We've got to make it so people are guided into the door. Okay. Yeah. So here you can like uh, equip your tank with stuff. You can choose um, what you want. I don't um, know what these are. Oh, missile. Yeah. Shield. Yeah, so, and shield. Shield. Grab the one above there as well, on the left. There you go. All right. And the, the jetpack just lets you fly at any time. You, okay. don't, you don't have to go off the ramps. Oh, that's handy. Yeah. Training for rock on. So yeah, it seems like uh, yeah. a lot of Nintendo's design philosophies when you were working on this were to make things as friendly to the user as yeah, possible. Yeah, exactly, whereas yeah, exactly. you wanted to make it more challenging for well, people. Well, no, I, just, I just wouldn't make it more challenging. I just. Kind of at the time, I was like 18. I was just like, yeah, you know, I'm a pretty hardcore gamer, so I just kind uh -huh. of, kind of left it, you know, in its natural state. Yeah. But they, uh, what Nintendo taught me is that to, to add little bits to help the player into certain things, mm -hmm. and not just leave it very cryptic. Okay. Um, and I think that was, uh, you know, one of the biggest lessons I learned at Nintendo, really. Stuff like this, you know, where they added the two gates. Yeah. Whereas I was, you know, as, a, as an 18 year old, I was like, well, it's obvious there's a door on the front of that radar uh -huh. and then you have to go into it. And they were like, no, it's not obvious. <laughs> For people like me, yeah, yeah. we need the game yeah, yeah, so exactly. we know where to go. Yeah, and even exactly. then I also need a translator in the first exactly. the game no, to help yeah, me yeah, know where yeah. to go. We did actually make the English version though and um, I used to have a, a copy of it. Um, did they just think there wouldn't wrong, be a market for it? Just, yeah, just wouldn't, yeah, unfortunately. Just, which is why I wanted to make a sequel actually, which is why I made the sequel for DSi. Because mm -hmm. I wanted, to, uh, I did, I wanted to people stop. to see it. Yeah. Okay. I'm guessing this shoot the, that tank. This is the missile lock on, so you want to use the other button, B button, right. to lock on. And I change the low gear to meet me. And when you, when you lock on, you can now, if you push left and right, gear. push left and right. Uh huh. Oh, oh. Uh, you should rotate around, you rotate around the object that you're locked on. Oh, crazy. Yeah, you use kind of like a strange kind of lock on. Oh, was that oh. my missile? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got him. And you got mushroom. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like the mushroom motif. Why, why mushroom? Why the mushroom? It's Nintendo. Was that, was that actually <laughs> yeah, yeah. their idea for you? <laughs> um, I'm not sure. It might be my idea. It was, and they it just was went, a while. They just went with the flow. <laughs> went, yeah. But oh, mushrooms, okay. It's not that strange. Yeah. So uh, I was always curious for especially very, very early kind of rudimentary 3D games like this. How would you build the maps for this? Because obviously mm. it's, it's very uh, I think, difficult to keep track of everything. Would yeah, you just yeah, do yeah. it on a graph? Yeah, on a graph and then, um, then just enter the data by hand. Just put in the coordinates? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can see the map down there, that the mm -hmm. funny grid um, is actually, so it's like a sort of gridded thing. Mm -hmm. um, and later on there's uh, missions that tell you to go to certain grids or, you know, the grids, grids you have to go to with flash and stuff like that to help the player okay. uh, solve the missions. It's a lot of information to convey on a very low resolution screen. Yes, it is. With yeah. four different colors. Exactly, only four colors. You can get into tunnels. Now you can go in, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Oh, interesting. Now this music was in Smash Brothers. Was it really? Yeah, yeah. Um, so they did a remix of this in Smash Brothers, which which actually got people reinterested in X again. Because like, well, this is actually um, there's a famous uh, Nintendo composer called uh, Totaka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and well, Totakeke is his, is, is, is his nickname. But um, this was his first 
his first soundtrack. Was so this really? The first game he worked on. Oh, uh, wow. when, so he was like a, a newbie and he was assigned to me. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> it's like, you know, so he was pretty young as well. I mean, he, he was yeah. just like a new graduate. Um, and uh, him and uh, Hip Tanaka, the guy who runs Creatures now, but he used to do the, like, music for Mother and yeah. other games like that. Um, and uh, uh, Balloon Fight and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, all, it's all Hip Tanaka. Um, so him and some Pakistan made, did all the music and sound for this. As so you choose which one you want to go to here. Oh, interesting. So uh, this, these are programmer graphics. I, I drew those. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, In fact, I drew all these. Oh, yeah? All the graphics I drew. The perspective is great. Yeah, the only stuff I didn't draw were the, like, the kanji fonts and stuff like that. Okay. But, um, <laughs> pretty much all the graphics I drew myself. So uh, we had a, uh, well, I made a special system for the, the, ch the Japanese characters. Mm. Um, because I couldn't read it. At the time, I couldn't read it. So um, I just worked <laughs> with one of their artists to make a system where he could design the characters and map them in properly when he needs them. Mm. Okay. Oh, no, it's telling you, so that's an altitude meter on the left there. Mm -hmm. Is this the altitude I want to be at where it was pointing? Uh, yeah, it's probably all right. It's just explaining, I think. Okay. And then you've got fuel, so you're using up fuel when you fly, basically. Okay. And on the right are like missiles. You've got eight missiles stopped. Oh, and it's telling you to fly through the pilot's wings. Oh. Very early, uh, very yeah, pilot wings, Star Fox kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah kind of Star Foxy. So this is just like a little tutorial to show you how to fly, and there's kind of a bit of a weight to your flying because you're kind of almost like you've got like a, a sort of jetpack kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, if I go down, I you I kind of start down, dipping down so quite hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, how big was the team? Have you guys? Uh, it was basically me. Um, Sakamoto-san and uh, a guy called Sugino-san, uh -huh. uh, who was a guy who kind of did like a little bits of the art here and there. Right. Um, I ended up doing it, doing most of the art just because it's quicker for me, just quickly knock it up, <laughs> put it in. Uh -huh. uh, but he'd tune up some of the stuff sometimes when, it, when my art was particularly bad, and I would come over to Japan for like I don't know four or five weeks at a time. Oh really? And. Um, and then go back to England, and I carry on working in England, and then come back again for like you know four or five weeks, and did that. I probably did that in the course of a year. I came, I went to Japan. I flew over about seven times for a month, for like a month at a time. Yeah, yeah, time. yeah, yeah. Wow. Basically, yeah, yeah. And then uh, so I hardly spent any time in England that year. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and then when we started Star Fox, I was like, well, I don't really want to do that again. So um, I talked to uh, Miyamoto and uh, said, can, you, can we just come and live in Japan when we're doing Star Fox? It? And we set that up. And uh, that's when we actually moved to actually live in Japan. Oh, perfect. And then you started work on Star Fox. Yeah, yeah basically, yeah, yeah. And so um, you said you were making this game with Nintendo when you were, you started at like 18? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started at Algonon Software when I was 17. I kind of mm -hmm. uh, ditched school and um, well, I wanted to do 3D games. And, uh, you know, I asked teachers at school, you know, how, how do I project points in 3D space, what do I use to rotate, and, so, and they, they just couldn't answer, really. Because they weren't, <laughs> they weren't used to that kind of applied math. Mm -hmm. there, and there were like two 3D games at that time, right? Yeah, and they, and they, just, and they weren't really, you know, it's like games are so frivolous, that's, that's, that's not study, what are you doing, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, I'll screw that, I'll go and, <laughs> and I join, and I knew, from, I knew Argonaut from before, because they'd made Star Glider. Uh -huh. and, uh, and so I applied for a job uh, at Argonaut when I was 17. Um, actually, just when I turned 17, and then, and then they um, initially they turned me down because I didn't have any 3D demos. I showed them 2D stuff that I'd been doing, right? Because obviously I had I was I wanted to learn more about 3D, and then uh, I went back and on my Amiga I knocked up uh, like a 3D rendering system uh, by brute force <laughs> and sent that in, and then got a call the next day from Jed saying, "Oh, do you want a job?" Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were that impressed. So by if it? you try, yeah, it was it was not a bad demo. It was not bad. Oh. Um, and I used the, uh, I did, I did the rendering of the, 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 the rasterizing of the polygons um, using uh, uh, chain blitter uh, okay. interrupts, which no one was really doing at the time. So yeah. that's really interesting. So I'm totally gonna the pretend blitter, like I know what yeah, that yeah, means. yeah. Well, the, the, the Amiga <laughs> had like a blitter kind of pixel blasting kind of chip in okay. it, you know, for doing fast transfers of data, uh -huh. and I used that to, to, uh, to kind of chain together like. As you draw a polygon downwards, I just chained all the, the edges together. Okay, and that's how you would draw the edges of them. So you yeah, see the, yeah, and filled them up as well. So, um, but yeah, then I got the job, and then I, I worked on Star uh, Star Glider Two uh, for the PC, mm -hmm. 
I did most of uh, like the finishing up work on that. And then uh, after that, there was a weird little game console called the Conix Multisystem, which if you look up on the net, it's pretty interesting to look up in the history of this. It's a, oh, really? a console that didn't release. Um, but that hooked into the whole Nintendo thing after that, um, because the guys who were working on that hmm. uh, were chip makers. And, and when uh, Jez wanted a special 3D chip for, the, for Star Fox, mm -hmm. he had someone to call. Right. because he knew these chip makers and so he called them and uh, set up the whole super FX thing for, for Star Fox and that's how that yeah and that's how it all came around and if so if that if that console hadn't have ex existed <laughs> that probably wouldn't have happened like just the whole chain of events was yeah you know, it's like a, a series of unlikely kind of like business yeah. arrangements that set something really nice much bigger up happen. yeah exactly fascinating mm. cool I think on that note that's a good time to switch over to Star Fox yeah perfect all right let's get these consoles Switched. Uh, are you handling I think just, I think just about finished the um, tutorial there. <laughs> That's just the tutorial. What I yeah, did. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought I was it doing didn't, good. It didn't used to have a tutorial. And, uh, uh -huh. You finally graduated just a minute before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I thought I was doing good. I guess that was just teaching me how to play. That's well, so, like, uh, deep for a game. Yeah, yeah, it totally yeah, yeah. is. I guess I can kind of see why they were hesitant to, like, like try it out with other markets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, I but mean... It, the see, the regular game is black and white, I think, so it's more spacey. Kind of like this. So the oh, really? tutorial is all white and it's like the inverse. It's supposed to be like, like Earth and then you're Yeah, you're like in the virtual system. You're kind of in the virtual system when you're oh, doing that test. Um, but what's funny is that I, the game was completely finished and then um, and then Yokoi, uh, Yokoi you know, the guy who was mm -hmm. running yeah, that I, department, yeah. Okay. And he, uh, he, called, uh, he called me up while I, was, while I was still working on Star Fox. So we started working on Star Fox. Mm -hmm. And he called me up and said, Are we going to release this? But we need a tutorial system. And so I had to like take a break from Star Fox for just two weeks. So I went, so I went and just rushed in a tutorial system, which, which was oh, what, what I just did. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it just took, yeah, it just took two weeks to knock it up, but it was pretty um, intense. And then I went back to Star Fox. 